Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Peter Borhauer, just in case you haven't been around for the last few weeks and haven't learned my face. A few announcements for you this morning. Um, first, there's this lovely green card in your bulletin. If you take it out, fill it out so we know you're here. If you have any prayer requests, you can put it down. Any information you'd like to pass along to the church office or to Pastor Barb or myself. And then on the back, there's ways you can check to get involved with all of the various things going on um, here in the life of First Church. The next thing, pay attention to the sign. Construction starts soon, tomorrow, in fact. So next week you'll have to take a different route to get here um there was there's signs out in the narthex in the gathering area i think it's in the pioneer the map's up there you have to come down granville through the parking lot across the way and then into the main lot so i hope to see you next week I hope to see you all next week. <laughs> if you have any concerns, uh, just give us a call and we'll, we'll give you the directions. Um, also, I want to uh, offer a reminder and, and ask you all to lift up in your prayers the congregation uh, at Grace UMC in Coshocton and, and that whole community. Um, their church was damaged by a fire on Friday. Um, and there is a picture, um, seeing pictures on the news that did not look good. Um, so just keep them in your prayers, that God would support them in this time, and also offer us all a little reminder that uh, we are the church, not our lovely buildings that we care so much about that allow us to do our work, but we, the people of God, are the church wherever we find ourselves. Um, next, uh, we're looking for some folks who might be interested in representing First Church um, in the Sights and Sounds uh, tour at Christmas time. Um, the, a, a planning group is getting together at Trinity Episcopal um, on Wednesday. If you are interested in representing the church here, um, let us know. We would love to have your uh, input in that planning and you to represent us, whoever you are. I would love to have you represent us, and Pastor Barb would as well. So if you're interested, you can uh, let us know or put, there's a checkbox here on your connection card. And then um, coming up, uh, the church office is going to undergo some changes, um, new paint and new carpet, I think, and that necessitates some rearranging, and we have some extra uh, furniture and cabinets that we don't need anymore. So if you're interested in taking those, uh, let us know. Uh, the donation is accepted um, for that. But also if you are available on the 1st, uh, June 1st, to help move some stuff around, um, it would be wonderful to have a little bit of help. Um, you can let us know on the connection card or, or give Vicki a call in the office. And then the last announcement I have, um, we're still in the process of cleaning out the resource room. Uh, please go in there and take a look at any of the materials. You can uh, take just about anything home. There's one shelf back in the corner that's marked reference, and I think it's blocked off. That stuff isn't available, but everything else is. And um, the things that, that aren't taken by y'all are going to be boxed up and sent to love packages. Um, so we are looking for some folks who will also be um, available to pack things up next week and then to help deliver them to Delaware, um, load up the church bus and take it, I think, is the plan. Okay. Um, so if you're available that day, uh, please let us know. We would appreciate your help. And that's all the announcements I have this morning. So I'd invite you to please stand as you are able as we <clears throat> join together in our opening hymn this morning, The Strife is O'er, The Battle Done. <laughs>
be seated. This morning is Graduate Sunday, and we'd like to recognize those of you that have graduates. Um, we start with recognizing the middle school graduates, clear through college graduations. And so for this morning, um, we have Kathleen Snyder has several grandchildren. Her husband is very ill and in the hospital, and so they are not able to be here this morning. But here is the list. For those of you that your grandchild or child's name is called, please come forward and accept the card from us. So um, starting with the middle school, we have Joanna Snyder. Then with high school, we have Damian Frail, Allison Jean Copert, Riley Marshall, Ryan Ostrander, Sarah Snyder. In college, we have Amy Marshall and Dylan Ostrander. So if you are here and one of your grandchildren, please come forward. Todd, come forward. Welcome. Kirk Patrick is not yours. Uh, no. Al Allison. Allison. Yep. Riley. And Riley and Amy. And let's congratulate those that are grandparents of those that have graduating seniors.
two things. Our graduates looked a lot different than they did in the program. <laughs> they, uh, they didn't look so good in person. <laughs> the ones who came up didn't look like the pictures. They're retired pastors, I can pick on them. Second, I know music is planned well in advance, but it feels like people listen to my sermon about Alleluia. So I'm going to ignore the fact that it was planned months ago and say, good job listening. Would you join me in a time of prayer this morning? Lord, we do lift up our voice in Alleluia this day to give thanks for the victory that you have won, life over death. In the midst of all of the troubles in the world, Lord, we ask that you would help us to see the hope that you bring, the joy that you offer, the signs of life that are ever present with us. Lord, we ask that you would also help your children to know your presence, especially those who are brothers and sisters in Christ in Coshocton today, as they gather to worship in a place that is not what they feel like is home. Lord, help us to know that anywhere you are, that is our home here on this earth or in your heavenly home that you have prepared for us. Or we ask that you would also help us, your people, to minister in your name, to help those who are in need of healing, who feel like they lack wholeness or purpose in their life, to offer to, offer to them the hope that we have received through Jesus. And as we are in this season of graduation, Lord, we lift up our thanks for the hard work and dedication for the futures of promise for all those who are graduating in this time of year, for their plans that you would smooth their path, help them to find their purpose and to know that they just like all of us have been called to serve you wherever they find their, themselves, whatever their chosen career, vocation in life, that we are all ministers of the gospel of Jesus, in whose name we pray as we join together in the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. Our scripture this morning is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 3 through 8 and verses 20 through 22. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. The word of God, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, this morning as I was getting ready to prepare for the sermon, I was thinking it's graduate Sunday, so we should have something. Um, and I think to talk to the graduates, and I think it will talk to all of us as well, and remind us of what are the things we should be mindful of for graduation. Um, I grew up in the era of David Letterman and his top 10 list. Well, this is a top 12 list, and it comes from, um, it comes from a area called LinkedIn. And I'm not sure if I pronounced that right because my kids always correct me on that one. But um, this writer works for LinkedIn and, and came up with the list. And she had gone to all these different people to find the most successful people to see what they thought were the most important things. So let's go to our list here. The first one that she has on there is, remember these four words. Okay, here are the four words. Be positive, principled, proactive, and productive. Four words, four Ps. Positive, principled, proactive, and productive. Those are all good things to remember, not only at graduation, but all of our life. Remember the good things that are there and that God has given to us. Have your sights and your focus on what God would lead you to do. Be proactive. Be willing to step out in faith, I think. I'm adding my own scriptural notes to these. And productive is go forth and make disciples, but make a difference in the world. Point number two, discover yourself. Figure out who you are. Try to find your purpose. Try to see what you're good at, what you love to do. Discover your why, and you'll become happier and more passionate in life, according to them. And I think what it adds to us is when we discover who we are and whose we are as children of God, then we are able to go forth in life knowing that we have value and purpose. Does it mean that we always have it put together? <laughs> well, if that's so, I've missed the mark. But um, it's the fact that we go forth knowing that God will lead us and that there is a purpose and a promise in our, our lives. Number three, be open to change. 
Don't get discouraged, as they say. Don't be discouraged when a job you really want doesn't pan out for you. It just opens up doors to other opportunities. You know the saying, when one door closes, God opens a window? Know that there are always possibilities when you are following what God has for you. God loves you, cares for you, and wants you to succeed. So see where those doors open, and don't be afraid to walk through. Number four, a really good one, don't hide from mistakes. That's hard. Because in our society, we have been told that you are to be right, be perfect, have everything set just before you. But if we are Christians, if we know that God loves us and sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, then we can be honest that we aren't sure about something. We can be honest that we make mistakes. We can be honest and seek grace, not only from Christ, but seek grace from others. For others, others can be very helpful. This person wrote, I've always valued somebody willing to learn, and we do in different ways. I'll always highly regard someone willing to be honest about their mistakes because we learn from those just as much as we learn from our successes. So a mistake is not the end all, and I don't like the word fail. It is just, it's not right now. Let's reboot, let's go forward, let's try again something new. And this comes with number five. Keep moving forward. We can get caught in our our failures, our problems, our mistakes, and we can be held right where we are. But instead, we need to learn to hear the feedback. And this is one I have to work on. Never let it fester. Instead, consider it and take what works and move forward. Move forward. And that's what Christ has in mind for us, is to move forward with him into this world, to make a difference, to lift up the goodness, to see the Christ-likeness in every human being. Number six, learn from everything. Remember, every moment is an opportunity to learn from everyone around you, no matter their title. Everyone around you can be your teacher. Learn from them. Pay attention when things go well. Pay attention when things don't go well. Watch how people react. Build relationships with people who face problems by by being their solution. God tells us through his son, Christ Jesus, that we have grace, that we have forgiveness, that we have a chance to learn and to move forward, to learn from everything. And I like to be that person that goes and watches people. I took a youth group uh, to a, a soccer game soon after the first crew stadium opened, just a few years ago. And, um, I'm sitting there, and with my youth group advisors, they're looking at me, and one said to me, "Uh, Barb, uh, are you bored? And I went, well, no. And they went, well, I said, why would you say that? And they went, because you aren't watching the game at all. And I said, I don't understand soccer. I said, but I'm watching people. I'm really having a good time. Learn by watching. Number seven, make connections. Your biggest asset is your network. And for those that are graduating, I know that um, maybe high school and maybe college, maybe you've gotten to that point, that you think that your parents don't know 
or don't have those connections, but when they tell you to ask so-and-so, do it. For those connections make a difference. But our biggest connection that we have that makes the biggest difference in our lives is that we're connected as children of God and heirs of Christ, joint heirs with Christ. And so with that, we have a life of hope and promise. That's our biggest connection. And let God lead you through his son, Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, may you be led in the direction to go. And know with that connection, you will always have family. You will always have people that you can relate to. You will always have those that you can call as your family and also as your as your home, a place, a place that is yours. Make those connections. And again, I will reiterate, just do listen, par listen to your parents. And for those of us that are old enough to have our parents way older than us, do you remember your parents saying that to you? Let them do that help. My daughter was up for a job and it was for a camp counselor. And it involved many different counties that they were coming together. But the one county, the one county that seemed to get all the camp counselor positions was my home county. And I said, you have to go in and tell them you're a legacy. And she said, mom, a legacy to being a camp staff and I said yes tell them you're the camp staff person and she said I'm not going to do it she didn't get the job and she came home and she, I said well who was doing the interview and she named the person's name and I said oh my gosh I remember him as the scrawny little camper that was a pain to all of us I think he would remember me I think he was the one I told, be nice to Mr. Tree, because uh, he was beating on it. So make your connections, but know that your strongest connection is to Christ. Okay, this one is for me too. Be patient. Networking, resilience equals success. It won't be easy, but you have to start somewhere. There's that first step on the stairwell, so don't give up and know what the best is yet to come. That's not just for those that are getting ready to graduate, but think of all of us on all the things that we have to accomplish. Take the first step. It's hard sometimes. It's hard, and it's sometimes easier to say, I don't want to try. But the first step can be done if you ask the Jesus to go with you. If you ask Jesus to be there and help him, or help you take that first step to lift that leg, how many of you, and you can raise your hands on this one, how many of you have had a hip, shoulder, knee replacement? Okay. There are as many as that I suspected. But with that, taking that first step after that joint is replaced is very hard, I would suspect. But know that if you are too tired or too weary, that if you ask Jesus for help, he's there. You aren't alone. So be patient. Don't give up. Number nine, utilize your coworkers. I'm going to do that real soon. I'm going on vacation come June. And don't be intimidated by your colleagues or your superiors. And don't be intimidated that you aren't perfect like Jesus. Know that he loves you, cares for you, created you. Find ways that you're uniquely you. And 
See the ways that your coworkers, your friends, your other brothers and sisters in Christ are uniquely them. And work together to accomplish the goodness of the Lord. Number 10. Treat everyone with respect. Again, everyone is a child of God, created in God's image. Whether they claim him or not, they are still children of God. So respect them for God's creation. See how and why and the goodness of Christ in each person. One of the prayers that I do when I go hospital calling is that I pray for the hospital staff and for them to be healing hands, whether they claim Jesus or not, we know it's the power of Jesus working through them. God works through his children. So treat everybody with respect. Keep Number 11 is keep your own counsel. Keep some things inside. That's one of those things that you maybe have a place that you can share everything, and maybe your house is one of them. But there were things in a, a pastor's house, and I think there are things in everybody's house that we say, this stays within the family. Remember not to be critical of people for when you point with one finger, you have three coming back. Remember to be open and to, to not always say everything you think, to have a filter. Always reserve judgment until you have enough time to make up your mind. And number 12 is prepare for the future. Develop good time management habits early on. Work load will increase with time, and so will your responsibilities. Be ready to do them. But I think number 12 speaks louder to us than anything and goes to our scripture passage that we have had this morning. You see, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth who came to Christianity basically from paganism. And they are there and they are hearing the good news. And he's telling them, here is the most important part of the whole bit of the gospel. Jesus died and raised from the dead and is alive with us. And it's a proven fact because not only... Did he rise from the dead? It was seen by Cephas, and then by the disciples, and then by James, and then by five, it went on to tell more and more, 5,000 people, 500 people, 500 people. People saw the risen Christ. He was dead on the day that happened to be the festival Passover thing when people would sacrifice the lamb. But that was the day he was crucified. Behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Our future is based on knowing that Christ took away our sins and that death could not hold its prey, that he rose from the grave. And as the Passover feast went ahead and that festival went on, he died on Friday. There was the Saturday, which was known as the Sabbath. And then Sunday was the day, or the day we celebrate that he rose from the dead, is the day that the first fruits were offered to God to thank God for all the goodness and for the promise that he had given to them. And with this is the future that God offered us the first fruits of Christ Jesus, saying, I have given you hope for life eternal, hope for life in the future, 
hope for all of the goodness that is there because God has sent his only son who took away your sins and gave you a chance to have life now and to have it abundantly in the future. I think the problem that was there and what the last part of our scripture passage alludes to is that, yes, we have a future with Christ when we say yes to him. But one of the things that we often do is we say, that's down in the future. I'm going to tell you, and I think Paul was telling the church at Corinth, that the future, too, is here and now. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we come to know him and say yes to him, our future is changed right here, right now, and we have the joy of living with him here and now as well as a taste, just a taste of what is to come. Just a taste. And our future is great because Jesus said, I am here and I am with you and I will not leave you orphaned. One year, when our girls were tiny, it was my, my job that I got to take them out trick-or-treating. Oh, okay, I volunteered because I got to dress up too. And that year, we were all princesses. Actually, I was the queen mother. But anyway, yes, I had a good time too. Um, so Rachel was still a child that I was carrying around. And we only went a few doors. We were in the city of Columbus and only went a few doors in our neighborhood trick-or-treating. And one of the things that happened during that time was that Rachel, Rachel wanted something sweet so bad she could hardly stand it. And I have her pumpkin on one arm, and her is there too. She's by this. She can get her little hand in that pumpkin and get candy out. And I'm going, honey, wait till we get home. Let mama go through it before you eat any. And I have in the other hand is Rebecca. So I'm assuming that Rachel's probably around two and Rebecca's four. So my hands are full with pumpkins and kids. And Rachel reaches in and she gets a Tootsie Roll Pop. And I'm thinking, okay, it's a Tootsie Roll Pop, it's safe, I'm okay. But it's got the wrapper on it, she won't eat it. Wrong. She stuck that in her mouth and wouldn't let it go. And she kept sucking on it and sucking on it and sucking on it. And I said, can you taste anything? And she said, mm, mommy, it's good. And then I started thinking, you know, how much better that would be with the wrapper off? And I thought, that's kind of like what our life is with Jesus. When we say yes to him, we don't get to experience the full flavor till our death. But boy, can we get the goodness right at the beginning Sometimes even when we try to veil it with all the things around us, when we try to put things in front of us and obstacles, we can still see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And he is there with us. And we can still taste his goodness. So our future and our hope and our promise is that Jesus is with us. We are never alone. And the radio station, somebody has been asking me too about what radio station that I listen to. And I li listen to the river, and I listen, on my way, I change it to three different settings. 104.9 is the first one. I listen to 90.1 90 point, 90 point or 2 or 3 is the Lancaster station. And then I switch over and I hear it on the N Newark station, which is... 87.3, right? 89.3, thank you. I always get the numbers wrong. It's already punched in my radio, so I just have to hit it. But I hit them as I, I can hit the different sections as I'm driving because I go out of range on one and drive into the next range. And they were asking that we come up with a 
a graduation speech in five words. What would be your graduation speech in five words? And so I think it's for all of us. Here's mine. Invite Jesus on your journey. And may you know, that's the five, but may you know as you invite him on your journey that you will have him with you wherever you go and that will make all the difference in this world as well as the next because he is alive. Amen. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you that you have given us this real hope, promise that has been proven through people that Jesus met as he rose from the dead. Let us see your goodness here and now and take you with us wherever we go, whatever we face, and to know that our future is in you and wherever you are, Wherever we are, you are with us, and you seek us in all times. May we open our hearts and minds to you until our final graduation when we're one with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand and we will sing together our closing hymn.
now may you go, knowing that he is with you, that Christ is risen, it is true. And that's not only your future, but it's your hope and promise here and now. Go with him. Amen. may be seated. <laughs> 